Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today comes from the YouTube comments from Vladislav Surkov, and he says, the indices are one of the most confusing things in Pandas for me. What are the advantages of using indices instead of just storing its values in columns? All right, that is an excellent question. As always, we will uh, jump right in with an example data set. Um, so we'll import pandas as PD. And then uh, we're going to use a data set of alcohol consumption by country. So uh, we're going to say drinks equals PD dot read CSV. And then bit.ly slash drinks by country and we'll take a look at the head, okay? And you can see that each row represents a country and some data about that row, all right? And the thing you might have noticed is there's this part over here in bold and as well the part up here in bold. Now this over here is known as the index. This up here, which we've seen before, is known as the columns. So we're focusing mostly on the index um, let's just um, uh, look at it as an attribute. So if I say drinks.index, it will show me that the index is the integers 0 through 192, and the length is 193, okay? One index for each row, all right? And um, turns out that every data frame has an index and a columns uh, attribute for that matter. Um, so it's always there, it's not something that's optional. Um, and these are sometimes called the row labels, okay? So the index, sometimes known as the row labels. Now I wanna mention the columns because you might notice that when you look at the columns attribute, you'll see that it says index here. And that's the type of object it is, it's a special object. It's not referred to as the index though. When someone says the index or the row labels, they're talking about this. And uh, when someone says the columns or the column headers, they're talking about this. But it is an index technically, okay? Now, neither the index nor the columns are considered part of the, like, the data frame contents. And as such, uh, when you do drinks.shape, you see 193, which is the number of rows, um, and it doesn't include the, the column headers in that 193. And the six, one, two, three, four, five, six, does not include the index. The index is not part of the data frame in that way. All right, so it turns out that the, um, the index and the columns will both default to these integers if no index or columns are specified. So I'll just show you a quick example um, and we'll use a data set we've seen, uh, I think once before and uh, bit.ly slash movie users and we'll say header equals none and sep equals uh, the, oops, sorry, sep equals uh, the pipe character. And we'll take a look at the head, okay? And uh, this is users who rated movies on a website. And you can see he, this is all the data, but we actually didn't specify a header. And so that the header is also these default um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So uh, a lot of times people will leave the default index of integers, but rarely do people leave the uh, default uh, columns as integers, because usually you want to identify them by what's in them, okay? So we haven't answered the question yet, why does the index exist? And there are three main reasons. One is identification, the second is selection, and the third is alignment. And we're going to cover identification and selection in this video, and we will talk about alignment in the next video, okay? So for identification, I wanna show you an example of 
filtering the data frame. Uh, and we're going to go back to the drinks data frame. So uh, let's say drinks bracket drinks.continent equals South America. Let's just take a look at that. And the thing I want you to notice is that the index, also known as the row labels, stayed with the rows. It didn't just show us, it didn't kind of renumber them as 0 through 11 or, or whatever. Um, it kept the original row numbers. This is what we mean when we say the index is for identification. It's so you can identify what rows you are working with, even if you filter the original data frame. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk now about selection. Okay. And what I mean by that is, what if I want to grab a piece of this data frame? And I'm going to use a method that we've seen a couple times before, but uh, we'll talk in much more depth in a future video, which is the loc method. And the loc method allows me to say, if I want this number, I can say, what row is it in? And you refer to the index. So I want row 23, column beer servings. Okay, and I can pull out this 245 number. Now, loc is much more powerful than this, but you can use it just like this. Um, now, you might think, well, that's not that impressive. Um, I'm not gonna, number one, I'm not gonna remember, if I want the beer servings in Brazil, I'm not gonna remember that Brazil is 23. I'm gonna have to look at it anyway. So, you know, why do I need this, uh, you know, the index for this? But uh, this, I'm gonna show you the answer to this question um, by setting a different index. And this answers the original, uh, the viewer's question about why use an index? Why not just put everything as columns? And here is the reason. So we can say drinks.setIndex, and we say set it as country, in place equals true. Take a look at the head. And um, by saying in place equals true, it occurs in place. Uh, you don't have to reassign it to another data frame. And you can see now that the data frame has changed because the country series, that column, has now become the index. And the pre-existing index, the default index of integers, has disappeared. Okay, So uh, if you check drinks.index, you will see that it now is Afghanistan through Zimbabwe. Okay. Um, it still has length 193. Okay. Uh, if you check the columns, you will see it's no longer, country is no longer one of the columns. And in fact, um, if you check drinks.shape, it now says 193 by 5 because the index isn't, again, it's not part of the data frame. Okay. So, because we have now set the country as the index, we can now use the loc method. And we can say Brazil instead of 23. We say Brazil beer servings. And we get that 245 number. Okay, So by setting the index as something that was meaningful to us, we can now select data from the data frame more easily. Okay. Now, a couple follow-up issues. Uh, one is you might be wondering, what is this right here? Like it's not a column, but it's just kind of hanging out there. And that's actually the name of the index. So if you look here, you can see name equals country. Okay. Now, you don't have to have an index name. It's helpful as kind of an identifier of what it's being used for, or what it represents, but you can actually clear it out if you need. You can just say drinks.index.name equals uh, none, Python's none object. And if you look at the head, uh, it's now gone. So it's still the index, it just doesn't have a name. Okay. Now, Let's say 
you decide at this point, you know what, I kind of prefer to use the default index and I'm going to move this back into a column, okay? And you can do that, okay? Now, the thing I'll show you is that you will first probably want to give that uh, index its name back. So drinks.index.name equals country. And then we're going to reset the index and say in place equals true. And then look at the head. And if you check that out, you'll see that we are back to having the default integer index. And the country, which was the index, rejoined the data frame as one of the columns. Okay. Now, it was important to set the name of the index before doing the reset because uh, pandas decided what to call this column based upon the name of the index. Okay. All right. Um, as always, we are going to end with some bonus content. And I just want to show you, uh, we've seen this many times before, but uh, the describe method, okay? And uh, it's just a numerical summary of, of the numerical uh, columns. And uh, I want you to notice that this is actually a data frame. And as such, data frame, it has an index. Okay, let me just copy that. You know, this is the index. Okay. And these are the columns. Okay. So the point here is not so much that you're going to do something uh, with dot describe. You might. But I want you to be aware that lots of methods output data frames. And if you know about the index and the columns and you recognize that, you can interact with that resulting data frame. Okay, so for example, we can say drinks.loc and we can say 25%, this 25th percentile, and beer servings and pull out, whoops, what did I do wrong? Drinks describe.loc, pardon me. So it's drinks.describe outputs a data frame, .loc is a data frame method, and then we pulled out using the index and the column attributes, we pulled out this 20 number, okay? So just be aware of the type of objects you're interacting with and take advantage of the index and the columns wherever you can, okay? So, that's it for today. As I mentioned, I'll cover uh, alignment in the next video, and as well, I'll talk about the series index. Okay. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Please do click subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, please leave a comment or a question below, and I'd love to check it out and maybe answer it for you in a future video. Uh, so thanks again, and I hope to see you again soon.